you b- become a three time All Star, which is huge. Um, career going great, then you run into the unfortunate incident um, with J- Javaris Critton. Uh, how do you think, or do you think, that situation really changed the way Gilbert Arenas was treated in the NBA, the way Gilbert Arenas was looked at? Do you think that really ended up changing the outcome of your career? No, see, <clears throat> before that, um, I had uh, three knee surgeries in 14 months. Yeah. You had micro fractures, right? Yeah, I had the, yeah, yeah. the micro fracture that just ruined everyone's career. Right? Absolutely. Um, you know, so I was part of that um, experiment. Um, mm-hmm. So, truth be told, I wasn't the same player. Mm-hmm. When I got into the trouble, I wasn't the same player. There's my owner just passed. Um, them being loyal to me wasn't, it was more business at that point. Um, you know, a, Mr. A. Poland signed his guy to a max deal, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Because like, you know, Mr. And this was, this was a, ha- this what happened the year before um, when I opted out of my contract, I'm hurt. Didn't only play two games. Mr. Poland said, I don't care what they're saying. You did your job. Whatever you want is I'm going to sign it. Whatever you want, I don't care what you want. I'm going to sign it. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the general manager saying. So you're my guy. You lived up to yours. I'm going to live up to mine and sign me to the 111, right? Mm-hmm. So he didn't listen to the experts. He didn't listen to the general manager. He didn't listen to no doctor. He didn't care. Um, so once he passed, um, I remember I remember uh, we are at the ceremony and Brendan Haywood was like, uh, <laughs> he looked at me and said, uh, yeah, they're going to come. You better be on your best behavior. They're going to come after that contract. <laughs> man, I'm untouchable, man. They ain't doing nothing to me, right? No, he was, he was right. I was wrong, right? So, you know, going through that situation with Javaris, it was um, it was real shocking because it's like uh, my whole thing was like, man, you can do a hundred things right. You make one mistake. It erases your whole legacy. Absolutely. Your whole legacy. Like, my whole legacy is, is cleared out for one bad decision, one bad judgment. You know what I mean? And that's what didn't sit well with me. Like, the, the Wizards part, you know, that's expected. You know, that's business. I get it. I, under, I understand that. I would have did the same thing. You know, especially now when you're older. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's business. It's this. You know, I gave them a chance to do it, you know, and they have to make their decisions. So, you know, but my thing was just worldwide over. It's like, you know, this one thing is what you're judging me off of now. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, that, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep at night with that. Like, that's where I just lost the love. Like, it's like, I was batting 100%. <laughs> I missed one shot. I'm the sorriest motherfucker on the planet. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't, live, I can't live with that, man. And then that's where, you know, I really kind of had lost the love at that moment. You know, right there, I was just moving through the motions. So, so you lose love for that. You're also battling the microfracture Injury. stuff and injuries from that. And <clears throat> I know at the, towards the end of your career, where the last year you, you end up playing, you you went over to Shanghai and played with the Shanghai Sharks. Um, do you ever look look back at your time in Shanghai, or do you feel like you weren't uh, just quite the player that you were anymore to do that? But do you ever look back at your time in Shanghai and, and wonder or wish you would have stayed over there longer after looking at the business that um, Stefan Marbury, Marbury ended up building and going over to China and kind of making a career out of it after the NBA? Nah, see, so when, when I, when, so I, I was the, before I went to Shanghai, I was working out with the Clippers. So I was playing with the Clippers that summer. You know, they had open gym. Bello was there. Everybody was there. So I'm playing well. Um, and then the Lakers open up their, their uh, practice facility two weeks before training camp start. So that's when like Steve Nash was there. That's when that team was coming in. So I'm playing well, like, you know, Eddie Jordan, my, my, my head coach, he's the assistant coach over there. Uh, Mike Brown came over. So yeah. I'm tearing their asses up, right? So I'm talking to Eddie and he's like, what, what are you going to do? 
He said, because they really like you. So they're, 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 they're trying to see if you want to go to the, at the time, I think it still was the D league. And mm-hmm. you play on the D league team, get all the understanding of the offense. That's like the, what offense? The one I created? The, the Princeton, <laughs> like, like, I don't have to worry about that. I know that like the back of my head. And he was like, you know, that's what they're saying, just to stay in shape because, you know, they don't want to, the season starts and you're just in limbo mode. So I was like, you know, I'm thinking about going to um, China, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm going to China, get my little swag back over there, shoot the shit, you know, shoot every shot, you know, and I Absolutely. ain't thinking about passing the ball. It's like, that'd be, a, that'd be a good thing. Um, I didn't know Doc Rivers was inviting me to training camp for oh, the Clippers. Wow. Um, but, you know, it was when I heard about it, I'm like, nah, because they just signed J.J. Redick. Um, they got Jamal Crawford, Chris Paul. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to play. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I can get some time and show I still got it. So um, I end up going to, you know, I end up, you know, going to China, make the team. The coach there, <laughs> I'm glad I don't even remember this motherfucking name. Bro. I'm, I'm glad I don't remember his name. He made me train 10 days straight, two a days. What? Right? Yeah. To see if I I was in shape, to see if I had it, like, you know what I mean? And just whirl my body. So by the time we got to the first game, we're playing against Stephon Marbury. <laughs> came down, hit a three on him, came back down, pulled my groin. Pulled three oh. muscles in my groin. Yeah. So pulled three muscles on my groin. And that's what kind of hurt my situation there. So I had to come back to the States. You know, I finished the season, like, you know, hobbling here and there. Mm-hmm. Came back to the States, rehabbed all summer. And then I was playing with Boogie. I was playing with Boogie. And me and Boogie was playing well. Um, he said he was going to give me an invite to play for SAC. Um, so it's going to go, you know, SAC or go back to China. And I played in uh, the Drew League. Mm-hmm. And pulled it Had, again. Uh, tore my meniscus. Jesus. Yeah, so it was one of those things like, all right, I give it up. I, oh, I, I, it. I, I get it, I get it. I, I understand. I wow. give it up. So that was really how, how it kind of ended that, you know, every time I put so much work in and the little, a little knack, mm-hmm. let me know, let it go. Yeah. Let it go. What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward.